Welcome to our aviation tutorial on the classes of airspace. Whether you're a pilot or an aviation enthusiast, understanding airspace is crucial for safe and efficient flying. Let's dive into the world of airspace. In aviation, airspace is divided into different classes, each with its own rules and regulations. These classes are like invisible highways in the sky, and knowing where you are is essential for navigation and safety. We'll start with Class A airspace. This airspace begins at 18,000 feet above sea level and extends up to 60,000 feet. It's typically used for high altitude, long distance, and commercial flights. In Class A airspace, all aircraft are under the control of air traffic controllers, and pilots must follow instrument flight rules, IFR. All flights are provided with ATC service, and all flights are separated from each other. Moving down, we have Class B airspace. Class B airspace is found around busy airports, designed to keep aircraft orderly during takeoff and landing. It resembles an upside-down wedding cake, with multiple layers that gradually expand as you move away from the airport. In Class B airspace, both IFR and Visual Flight Rules, VFR, flights are allowed, but you must receive clearance from air traffic control. All flights are provided with ATC service, and all flights are separated from each other. Now let's discuss Class C airspace. Class C airspace is typically found around medium-sized airports. It has two layers, and to enter, you need to establish two-way radio communication with the controlling ATC facility. This airspace is used for both IFR and VFR flights. All flights provided with ATC service. IFR flights are separated from IFR. IFR separated from VFR, VFR flights separated from IFR, and VFR flights get traffic information in respect of other VFR traffic. Next up, Class D airspace. Class D airspace surrounds smaller airports with control towers. To enter Class D airspace, you must establish two-way radio communication with the tower, whether you're flying IFR or VFR. It's essential to adhere to ATC instructions in this airspace. IFR flights are separated from IFR. IFR flights get traffic information in respect of VFR flights, and VFR flights get traffic information in respect to all flights. Moving on to Class E airspace, it's the controlled airspace that fills the gaps between the other classes. It starts at the surface or a designated altitude and extends upwards. Class E airspace can be used for both IFR and VFR flights, and it doesn't require communication with ATC unless otherwise specified. IFR flights are separated from other IFR flights. All flights receive traffic information as far as is practical. Note, Class E airspace is not used in control zones. Finally, there's Class G airspace, also known as uncontrolled airspace. It extends from the surface up to either 700 feet or 1,200 feet above ground level, depending on your location. In Class G airspace, there are no specific requirements for communication with ATC, making it suitable for VFR flights. Remember, these airspace classes may vary depending on your location and local regulations. It's crucial for both pilots and air traffic controllers to understand and respect these airspace classifications to ensure safe and efficient operations in the sky. So, whether you're a pilot soaring through the skies or an aviation enthusiast gazing up from the ground, understanding the classes of airspace is essential for a harmonious and safe aviation experience. If you liked what you saw and learned something new, please consider giving us a thumbs up by hitting that like button down below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you'll stay updated on all our latest videos, and you'll become part of our amazing Aviation Nation community. Also, feel free to leave your thoughts, questions, or suggestions in the comments section. Your support keeps us going, and we can't wait to see you in our next video. Until then, safe travels and as always, keep looking up.